Hello everyone. I'd like to welcome you to Classic Rewind and this is my GTO. Whoever's been following me knows that I've been working on this for quite some time. Uh, I'm trying to make it just right. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. Um, today I am going to be working on this door that goes right here. I have it set up on my bench over there. It's a little tight to work in here because of all the material that I have. So that being said, I am going to try to get this door adjusted from the bottom and the side flush with this uh, quarter panel. And when I say flush, I want to get about a 3 16 gap on my, on my rear quarter panel to my door. So that is going to take some time and some grinding so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to the hinges because when I had the door up I had about a half inch gap I'm going to show you on the other side so you can see exactly what I'm talking about so I'm just going to try to move the door back a little bit and I'm going to show you what you need to do to accomplish that be right back okay this is the driver's side door and I wanted to show you you see how the gap here like right here, it's like about, I want to say about a half inch, and then it gets tighter down here, um, maybe down to like, I don't know, what is that, three eighths, and then it opens up again as you go lower. So what I'm going to try to do is push the passenger side door back just enough to where I have a three sixteenths inch gap, and I'm going to show you what you need to do to accomplish that. So over here... Um, in the front fender, it lines up really nice uh, right here. It lines up really nice um, in the, the gap between the door and the fender. So that's basically what I am looking for on the back side of the door. But if you see right here, it gets a little wider. So I, I haven't adjusted this 100% yet. But I'm going to have to probably put some filler in there. Uh, when I say filler, I'm probably going to put a bead of weld and clean that up so it, this gap is symmetrical to the other side. And if you look as you go down, it gets a little wider as the lower you go on this door. So that is what I'm going to be working on today. I'm going to get the passenger side first and I am going to push it back. So I just wanted to show you on this side what it looks like. So let's get started. Okay, these right here are the hinges on the door. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to elongate these three holes on each of my hinges. So this is my other hinge right here. So I am going to take my drill bit and I'm going to elongate them and just add I would say 3 sixteenths to an eighth inch space on each hole and that way that will give me adjustment on the door right there to slide it back so once I once I secure the door on my hinges I was I would be able to move it back a little further than um, I could without doing that. So this is already bottomed out as you could see those threads. It's already pushed back um, as far as it could go. So I'm just going to try to get that extra little bit on the um, door hinge itself. So let's uh, start that process and I'm going to show you what needs to be done. I put this bit right here. See that? It is a carbide burr bit right and it's 3 8 which is the size of the hold here and what I'm gonna do is basically get in here and start this and just keep grinding down but, but before I do all that I'm gonna put a little smiley face so to speak right on this edge and that's gonna give me a, the depth where I need to stop because I want them all to be pretty much equal they don't have to be, but I would like everything to be symmetrical. So when you take the hinge off, you're not going, oh my God, you know, woodpecker chewed on this thing. So, but yeah, 
I want them to be symmetrical. So I'm going to get started on this one here. I'm going to get my, my line right over here. And I'm going to bring you down here and show you again what it looks like after I do one. So uh, let me get started. Okay, I made my marks here. And when I'm finished with one, I'm going to bring you down here so you could see what it looks like. Um, and that way you have an idea of, of what, if you plan on doing this on your car for adjusting the doors, you know what to do. I just wanted to show you there's a lot of grinding that needs to be done and this is uh, 3 16 metal these hinges are super heavy so this is going to take some time so I am going to turn the camera off and when I'm done with this hole down here I want to like I said I just want to get a good eighth of an inch um, oblong gap on my a hole for the bolt so I could have a little more adjustment so while I'm doing this because it takes so much time I'm gonna turn the camera off and, and turn it back on when I'm done so again um, I'm gonna show you what this looks like up close when I am complete so I'll be right back Okay, I just got done doing my last hole. I have a little bit more to do on my last hole, but I'm going to bring you down here and show you what I was accomplishing with the, um, with the other one over here. So I just oblong the hole. It takes a long time to do it with this rasp bit, uh, burr bit, sorry. Um, but if you want, you could always drill a smaller hole next to it and, and go up with your drill bit and then eventually go in here with your burr bit and clean it up or you could use a drill bit like this it's a it's a rasp drill bit so you could just take it and get rid of all the uh, the excess metal that's in there the reason why this takes so long is because this metal is so thick and I don't have a uh, milling machine that I could take this off and secure it and come in here with my milling machine and do that I don't have it um, so that'll work as well but the other thing I wanted to say is this works well it just takes a long time um, so if you want you could drill another hole next to it um, and chase the hole a couple times with a larger drill bit and then come in here and clean it up like I said with either the rasp bit or the uh, burr bit so let me bring you down here and show you what this looks like okay this is what I wanted to accomplish you see how the holes are oblong now and let me show you on this one here see how the holes are just plain old 3 8 thick holes um, so that gives you more adjustment if you make these oblong and I know you could put a spacer in the back of the hinge and you can do that but I want it to be as secure as possible when I'm putting this on the car so that's why I'm going ahead and doing this. As you can see, I just need to clean it up a little bit more, but they came out really nice, and that's all I really wanted to accomplish. Um, I want to show you, here's a drill bit inside uh, the hole. You see you see the, the play that's in there? So hold on one second. Okay, this is, this is the, actually, uh, the actual deburring bit right here. So let me stick that in there, and you see, that's all I wanted to do. You see that little, probably, what is that, maybe 3 16 heavy, an eighth, and, and that's all I wanted to accomplish, okay? Show you on this one. 
And that's, that's all the adjustment that I really want and need on this door. So they're all about equal. So uh, I just have to make maybe one or two more passes just to make sure that it doesn't bind in like the corner over here or, or the corner over here. So I just want to make sure that, that that is cleaned up enough where I can do that. So if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it on this hinge and then put the door up. And that way I can adjust and see where we are with uh, the adjustment on this door. So this is just... Um, letting you know how to do it if you don't have a milling machine like I mentioned. So let me turn the camera off and I'll be right back. I just wanted to show you what I did over here. So I oblonged those holes as well. See that? So uh, I just have to clean up the burr a little bit. Hold on, it's a little blurry. I just need to clean up the burrs a little bit and then that's going to be done right there. Okay, that's oblonged, as you can see that here. And then this one here is done as well. That one came out a little nicer, but I think because it's painted black, it's a little, uh, shows that it's a little off. But anyway, that's all really I wanted to do. So there, there you have it. See that? I got myself probably 3 sixteenths. 3 sixteenths right there. And then 3 16 I could always cut a little more off if I need it. But that's basically all I wanted to do. So, like that. So, let me set that up so I could put that on for you so you could see what it looks like. And all right. That's done. And that one's done. So, these are temporarily secure. And... I just want to bring you down here and show you how I did this. Um, I put a piece of cardboard under here to, just to keep the door from hitting the rocker panel. And it looks like this has to come up probably a sixteenth of an inch. So by doing that, what you need to do, uh, this is actually a two-man job. So I need to get someone to come and give me a hand. So I'm going to loosen that up and um, just a hair. And what I'm going to do is lift the door up just, just enough to get me that space right under here, um, which is probably 3 sixteenths of an inch. And I just want to make sure this is nice and flush, which it is. Um, so now what I'm going to do is hold it in place, tighten these up. Again, this is a two-man job, so I got to get a helper here. All right, so that's nice and tight. Take this cardboard out, see how that is. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. So I, it still needs some adjustment, but I could manage. I, I'm going to bring you down here and show you my gap. By doing that, I got this so close to this quarter panel where it's, it's almost uh, touching right here, which is great. That's what I wanted it to do. Now i got to move it a breath forward, but I have a big gap here. This here is a aftermarket quarter panel, and you can see, I'm going to bring you over here, how this is done uh, not to my liking. So what I'm going to do is actually cut this, tap it over with my hammer, uh, weld it, closed again, and then fill it up. So I'm, I'm going to show you what this looks like, but I'm really happy with that. Like I said, I have to push the door forward. Um, this down here needs some hammer and dolly work to get that flush with the rocker panel. Um, other than that, I'm, I'm happy with the quarter panel. So let me show you. This is the bottom of the door along the rocker. And as you can see, that part right there needs some hammer and dolly work. Okay, got a, I got a push it in because it's sticking out a little bit past the rocker okay and as you go further back you could see right there it just goes down right so that's telling me that the uh, the door right here needs to come up 
just to get that equal spacing. So I got to pull it away from the rocker, which is right there. Okay, so I pulled that away and you could see that gap. See that gap right there? That is pretty much ideal, um, but it needs to come up a breath right, right there. The whole door needs to come up about a sixteenth of an inch. And you can see right here where I need to do some body work. This body line does not match the quarter panel body, body line. So what I need to do is work this a little bit. Um, and you can see how close that is to the door. Okay, that's pretty much ideal right here. That's your 3 16 And then this right here just gets tighter and tighter and tighter. So what I need to do is pull the door forward a little bit. And then you have the gap getting wider as you go up. And this is where I was telling you uh, where the quarter... See, there's, a, there's like a slight dent right there. You can see it in the shadows. But this right here is where I was telling you it needs to do some some work in here so it matches okay you see that you see how this like bulges out so what I'm gonna end up doing is cutting this with my grinder tapping it in and then re-welding that so it's actually mates well with my door you see how that that's a little um, messed up there so that that is actually pretty good to where I could start making this work with my um, uh, my door. So again, I have to push this door forward and let me bring you over here. This gap right here is pretty good, but you can't really judge this yet until you put the fender. Once the fender goes on, then you need to know if this needs to go uh, backwards or forward along your A pillar. So that being said, let me show you right here where I oblong the holes. You see that? Just that little bit. That's all I needed to do, and, and it worked out well. See that? So, sorry about it, getting blurry. So then this one here, again, same thing. Needs to come a little forward, and, I, and I'm really happy with the way that turned out. Again, hammer and dolly right here because it sticks out. So that's an easy fix. And uh, the gap on the GTOs, in case you did not know, the reveal is not on the rocker. The reveal is between the door and the fender. So the fender actually touches up against the rocker here. And your, your body line is actually from the fender to the door and then that's your body line in case you were wondering so there you have it so I'm gonna what I am going to do is move it forward a little bit I'm gonna wait for my uh, helper to come to give me a hand I'm gonna move it forward get the door to where I am happy and then once I get the door to where I am happy I am going to um, install the front fender tight to the firewall which is right here tight to the firewall and then I'm gonna get that all situated and then play with the gaps on the door but for right now um, without the weather stripping being on and all that other good stuff I am really happy with the way that turned out Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, I just got done installing the inner fender. I put two bolts at the bottom over here on the radiator core support, and I put the two bolts over here on the firewall. So now what I need to do is I need to install the fender. And like I said, I'm just mocking this up. I just got done drilling the holes on the hinges. I'm oblong them to make them a little wider so I could push the door. I have a little more adjustment than um, I did before. So once I do that, well, I did that. So now I'm gonna start installing the fender. And then once I get that to where I want it, 
then I could start messing with the hood again and seeing how that lines up. I still have to do the other door on the other side. So uh, let's get started. This is the hard part, is lining up the inner fender with the, with the fender. So it helps if you have an extra hand. It goes in a little easier. But if you take your time, you can do it. And that's pretty much it right there. So as you can see here in the camera, I have a big gap. That's because the whole fender has to come back uh, to compensate for all this alignment and adjustment that you need to do. So I'm going to get everything bolted up temporarily, push everything back, and then I'm going to turn the camera back on and show you exactly what I did to get to this point. So I'll be right back. Just got done adjusting everything. Uh, that I wanted to and I realized while I was doing it I'll show you in a minute um, I'm by myself but I had my friend come and help me uh, Mark I like to thank him for helping me and I realized that the body is not square with the um, frame it's it's out it's out about a quarter of an inch so I have to shift the rear of the body over an eighth of an inch so I have more adjustment or less adjustment on the driver side and more adjustment on the passenger side so I'm going to show you what I had to do in order to do that uh, in the meantime I lined everything up as much as I can to where I'm accepting the fenders to the bumper so I'm going to show you that as well the other problem that I have is this hood, it's good on the sides right along here and you have an adjustment on the radiator core support and you have an adjustment on that side of the radiator core support. But right here it is about, I want to say a quarter to three eighths of an inch high in the center. So that means either this hood here has to either flare out in order to drop or I have to bend this center of the hood down. But that is going to be another video because that's going to take way too much time, way too much uh, explanation on how to do that. Um, the other thing I can do is basically lift the passenger and the driver's side front end up and then push the middle of the hood down. And that'll, that'll actually do that. That'll actually fix this problem here. But I don't want to get involved with that because it's way too much uh, explaining in this video because I already have a lot of time in this video. But I'm going to bring you down here. I'm going to show you my gaps. I'm going to show you this. And, and this could, this for some reason, when they designed the bumper on this 68 GTO and on the 69, I think it's very similar that there's a lot of movement. Um, if you have hideaway lights, you can actually bolt the fender to the bumper. And there's actually a bolt, a threaded rod that you could bolt to uh, when you do that. But this is not gonna be hideaway headlights, so it just makes it a little more difficult. But you could always weld a rod to it and put a bolt and adjust that um, if you want, also, if you want to do is put a rod from your radiator core support to the fender and that way that'll give you uh, like a threaded rod where you could like a hind joint where you could basically spread and contract 
the fender to the bumper, that'll actually make it a lot easier for you too. I am not going to do that on this car, but unless I absolutely have to, and I don't see that happening right now, but I might do it just to stiffen it up. Eh, we'll, we'll see. But I'm going to bring you down here. Enough of me yapping. Uh, I'm going to show you what I did uh, with the hood in place and show you all my gaps so you could see what it's going to look like. So then I'm going to pop the hood off and then show you where I have to move the body of the car over about an eighth of an inch and I'll show you why. All right, I'm going to push this back and show you what needs to be done. Here we are on the passenger side of the car, okay? So what I ended up doing was, in this video, was moving the door back so it is even pretty much with the rear quarter panel. So you have to start from the back because you can't move the quarter panels. Get your line there correct and then adjust your door accordingly. So when I did that, I realized that it is more involved on this car because of the aftermarket panels that I've been using, the hood, the radiator uh, support, that's an aftermarket. The inner fenders are aftermarket. Everything needs to be adjust adjusted more than normal. But I want to show you how nice this came out. So you could see the gap there. So that means that that door got to come forward about a sixteenth of an inch and other than that I mean it is really really nice up here I'm gonna need to do some welding to get that gap uh, closer I like it to be about three sixteenths like right here so I'm gonna show you uh, in another video how I do that but I oblonged the hinges and I push the door back so that being said I want to show you my gaps. So right here from the hood to the fender, that is pretty much even. I'm not going to put any trim on this car. It's all going to be black. Um, this, the underside here where the trim goes, let me show you right there. I'm actually going to paint that the same color of the, of the car so it all blends in. So I'm going to weld those holes fast so there's no hole there so you don't see that. Um, but right here, you see down the line, you see that gap, it gets tighter as it goes forward, okay? So all you got to do is basically move it over just a little bit, and then we're, we're fine there. So now, I'm going to move you up here, and here we are. This is the gap pretty much that we want right there. That is probably an eighth. I want to go a sixteenth of an inch more right here but this is where everything transitioned the gap on the 68 and 69 gto is along the bumper so the hood and the fender are an equal distance and the gap is on the bumper in case you were wondering and if you could see that's really smooth everything is lining up right there got a little hump right here okay right in here but I could fix that with some filler this is pretty much equal down the line right here so that gap see how that's lines up very nicely I'm gonna leave that go for now um, so now over here this is where the problem is you can see the hood is actually higher than the bumper itself you see that so that is going to be in another video all right over here again you got a nice 3 16 gap all the way up 
let me show you. So here we are. This lines up nicely right there. See that? That lines up. It actually looks like you got to come back a little bit, just a breath. But this fender here is not bolted because of the problem that I found that I need to move the body over, and I'll show you uh, that in a minute. So there it is. That's, that's all that I did so far. Sorry for the late video, but uh, just want to make sure everything is right. So 